If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com, wistia.com at w-i-s-t-i-a.com, and Zoho Mail. Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Social Media Acts Podcast, now on Skype, because apparently Hangouts doesn't like me or Windows 10. It's me, and it's Jody this week. Howard is out playing with bows and arrows with his daughters. It sounds worse than it actually is, but he's, his daughter's an archery champion of some sort, so Howard is out galvaning around, um, what, what is it, um, Friar Tux Woods? What does Robin Hood You, you got me. I, I, I have no idea, but I'll tell you what. The idea of Howard with arrows is really terrifying. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think he's just cheering them on. But, yeah, so I think it's pretty funny. But, good you know, for good for them. I'm so glad. So Jody was, Jody's back from her galvanic around the United States, which is fun, or to Florida. Yes, yes, yes. We had a wonderful time. Went to visit my mom. It was her 90th birthday and um, got her an iPhone 6. So, regular or max? Not a plus. I got the regular. Regular. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I mean, to me, the plus is overkill. It's it's like a phablet. And she already has an iPad. So. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, so. Do you, have, do you have an iPhone 6? No, I have a 5S. I kind of prefer the smaller size. So, uh-huh. I I, I'm, I'm curious what they're going to come out with next. But, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm torn. I, I like the, the speed of the 6. But I like the size of the 5S, so we shall see. It's classic now, and I got a new phone. I got the the Droid Turbo. Whoa, Turbo! Oh, it's it's a nice big screen. It's a 5.7 inch screen. It's huge. Okay. But I like it. The fast, but my camera died on my Moto X, and my um, the microphone died, and the headphone jack died. So the only way I could talk was on the speakerphone or Bluetooth. That's and awful. I, so I went over to the Verizon. I said, what can you do for me? I have another year. They're like, well, we'll put you on Edge, and you can pretty much rent your phone from us, whatever. Whatever they said, you know, you, know, you pay $20 more, but we give you $25 credit. But, you know, they, they work the numbers and confuse you and all that stuff. And, yeah, you know, it, sounds like, it sounds like one of those con shell games, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, one way or another, I didn't pay a dime for this phone, and I'm loving it. It's a great phone. I love it. So, cool. and, it and, and it's, it's Turbo. As a turbo, it goes it's, to it's a, essentially it's Moto X 2014, newer version of the Motorola, Motorola X with a better camera and more features. So it's if it's exclusive to Verizon. Ooh, Ooh. It's a, it goes up when you power up. It goes Droid. I thought they all did that. No, no Android. There's Android and then there's Droid. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you um, an extra point if you can tell me because it goes up to 11. Oh. If you know what that's from. And you probably don't. Star Wars. No. <laughs> oh, no, but Droid is from Star Wars. No, okay, no, no, um, that it goes to 11. Oh, you know, usually the phones only go to 10, but that goes to 11, so it's better. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Let's leave it as an open question. And no, tell me. The listeners tell go me. right in. Tell me. If what, I tell you, then I'm telling everybody. What goes to 11? It's from a movie. Um, Blade Runner? No. <laughs> no. That's, the ne- that's the next that's six is. That's a Blade Runner reference. No, no. It goes to 11. Why is, why is this amplifier so special? Well, most of them only go to 10, but this one goes to 11. What amplifier? <laughs> Never mind. What? Do we have some stories today? <laughs> yes, we have some stories today. First of all, let's thank our sponsors, Wistia, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. We love you guys. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you for putting up with us. And thank you for hosting us in the case of Flywheel and Zoho Mail and Wistia. They all host us in some way. One hosts our email, one hosts our video, one hosts our website. So we love our hosts. Wee! 
big. And we exactly. encourage you to, to uh, check them out. Check them out, and we'll, have, we'll have, talk about them a little bit more in the show. So, Jody. Yes, Seth. Twitter, Twitter now allows anyone to send you a direct message, even if they don't follow you. What the F? But there is a caveat. You have to turn it on. Okay. Would you, why would you turn it on? I don't know. I think for brands, it would be very helpful. Yes. If, you know, if you're doing customer service and says saying, follow me, follow me back, follow me back. Oh, you didn't follow me? Oh, you have all that way around? Yeah, I've it's had very helpful. Yeah. The Comcast has it turned on now. I found out Verizon has it turned on now. I think that's perfect for them. But it's a death knell for any user who doesn't, you know, why would I want to invite spammers to DM me? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, I think one of the, the things about Twitter is that that was one of the features you had to get used to at first. I, I can remember when I first got on Twitter trying to DM somebody, and it's like, well, wait, this person's not following you. And you're like, what? You yeah. yeah, exactly. And then you just kind of like expect that that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting taking a step backwards because we've all gotten used to the features the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe, you know, I mean, at this point, I... I'm not turning it on. Why would but, you? But that's just me. It is just you, Jody. It's only you. No. So, um, what about the Tide um, is turning against Comcast's proposal to buy Time Warner Cable? That is wonderful because, you know, as for people who don't know, Comcast is you know the evil empire. They 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 really. In your opinion, it's just opinion. In, in my opinion, no. I mean they're. They're out there. I mean, they're not the best company. They're not the worst company. But, I mean, the thing is, they wanted to buy the second biggest cable company out there, Time Warner Cable. And to, to me, at least, it screams, you know, monopoly. And well, they already control so much of the – most most markets, you only have two choices. You have Verizon, or you have Comcast, or you have Comcast and Cox, or you have, you know, satellite and or dial-up and Comcast. or You know, so you don't really have a whole lot of choice. Now, with one less cable provider out there, the Comcast by this time Warner, that means there's one less cable provider out there. Well, you know, and Seth, it wasn't that long ago that Comcast and Universal merged. Yes. So it's becoming a huge, huge organization. And I guess um, the question is, um, if you look at service providers, you're absolutely 100% correct. There, there's really not that many. And I think it's partially because of the cost of the infrastructure. You know, like all of the wires and the cables. But honestly, when you think about it, it probably won't be that far in the future that cable will be obsolete. I mean, I hope it isn't. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, I mean, the tide is turning. People are starting to see what it is, what it is, what it's worth. I mean, you do have to take this article with a grain of salt because Al Franken, Senator Al Franken, wrote the, wrote the article. And, you know, I'm kind of partial to Al Franken because, you know, he... he he's funny. He's hilarious. <laughs> but he's a comedian that turned became a senator and, in my opinion, a damn good senator. But it, he also was on Saturday Night Live. As an okay. actor on Saturday Night Live and a writer on Saturday Night Live. And now he's a senator. So, but it, it's... It just doesn't show that anybody... <laughs> anyone can be a senator. No, I, you know, it, it's, a, there, it's the fact that there's a, you know, you know, Comcast would control 57% of the high-speed internet market if they took over Time Warner Cable. Wow. So that's a, that, that's a that, huge chunk. That's a huge chunk. And I agree that, you know, the, the Department of Justice really needs to look into this. And the, and they are. And it's a $45 billion, b -b -b billion dollar deal if it goes through. Hmm. Crazy. But, and, and Franken says, you know, this $45 million, billion dollar deal goes through, it will create a telecom behemoth. Unlike, oh, yes. any, unlike anything we've ever seen before, dum dum well, dum squirrel. But, you know, it's it's funny because like you think back to when the before they deregulated the phone companies, yes. right? They were huge. It, it, you just had one choice. Mm -hmm. You went to Ma Bell. Ma Bell. Then they deregulated, and now they're back to being one, basically. Exactly. It, it it's just, it's cyclical almost. Yeah. So that's that. Um, let's thank our first sponsor for, the, for, for it. Thank Wistia. Okay, well, today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of their online video. 
We use Wistia here at Philly Tech Org because it's way more professional than YouTube, and the data that Wistia provides helps us understand exactly how our content's being consumed. And best of all, Wistia has a ton of free resources on their site to help those of us just getting started with video. They have tutorials on lighting, editing, choosing the right microphone, and an entire community dedicated to helping each other improve their videos. Oh, did I mention there's a free version of their service that can hold up to 50 videos? So go check them out. It's Wistia, W-I-S-T-I-A.com. The product is awesome. The learning resources are super helpful. And more importantly, the team over there is full of genuinely good folks. <laughs> and Seth wrote that. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. Ezra over at, over at Wistia wrote that. It's excellent. I wrote I, the generally, generally only good folks I wrote, but he wrote the rest of it, thankfully. Okay, but, but you know, it's interesting too, Seth, because you're talking about genuinely good folks, and, you know, it's a good segue into the next story. Yes. Facebook strips 200,000 pages of fake likes in the last Authenticity Drive. That's pretty incredible that, you know, everyone was like, oh, we want more likes, we want more likes, so we're going to buy some likes. Facebook's mm -hmm. saying, uh-uh. Uh, uh uh no 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 you can't do that. These have to be genuine likes. I would honestly I would much rather have a hundred likes on a page and have it worth be worthwhile. Like Philly Tech only has a hundred likes. And but I, they're I, real they're likes. They're real likes, they're organic likes. The so people that came in said we'd like this page. Versus me having a thousand followers or likes on, you know, Facebook. It's like it's a genuine like is it worthwhile? So I think it's great that they're doing it. And Facebook is slowly, until they make a misstep, they're, they're a bunch of um, generally good folks until they make a misstep. So. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I know we've gone through this with Twitter, you know, where um, it seemed like it was a popularity contest. And those people who had tons of followers were, were telling the rest of us, um, giving tutorials, like this is how you get followers as if followers were the measure of your success. Um, and I think the same thing happened with Facebook pages, particularly the business pages. Absolutely. You know, uh, you don't, nobody wants to go to a page that looks like a ghost town. <laughs> but, you know, not all tweets are real. That's true. Not all tweets are real. And social media, people from Purdue University tracked a, a big storm down, the board down on Rockford, Illinois, um, and they were seeing if, if social media and tweets can track, help track tornadoes. And so they, what they found was, Jody? Uh, well, they weren't sure that they were real. They weren't sure that they were real, that people could spoof it quite easily because it, so it's, it's no one stopping you from saying there's a tornado in this town. And, well, yeah, yeah and interesting, interestingly enough, I work a lot with um, emergency management services, um, it, it's interesting because you can see, like, a single tweet doesn't necessarily mean anything, right? When you start seeing a lot of tweets about the same subject, yeah. that's how you kind of differentiate that that's real. Yeah, he did an example of, um, the, you know, a tweet talked about, the storm killed my family, I'm the only one left in my basement. But the problem is there is no evidence that it actually happened. No one in, in Iowa died in that storm. So, so it kind of so when it's one off, what does that tell you? Versus, it's more of a mass thing because a bunch of people right. talking about it. it it's it's a, it's an idea of mass, and if it's one or two people yeah. talking about it, then it's really hard to judge the impact of a tornado. So it, it's literally if a tornado hits a unpopulated area, did it really exist? <laughs> no, it did, but I mean, the fact is, and there's probably, you know, Reed. What's mm -hmm. Reed's last name? He said Storm Tracker, famous Storm tra Tracker in the tank. He drives a tank around and goes and tries to get in the center of a tornado. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Oh, well, anyhow, he, he's probably there, <laughs> but, so it does exist for him. But I mean, the point being is, is that if the tornado doesn't hit anywhere, not many people are going to tweet about it. It's when it hits well, the towns, like, you know, um, was it Jolie? Well, Jolie, Missouri. Uh, Jolie, Missouri yeah. was like catastrophic. Mm -hmm. um, that one a few years ago. That was all over social media, and people were like tweeting like crazy. Like I lost my whole family. Like I didn't lose my whole family, but people were saying my whole family is yeah. gone because of this tornado. And 
you know, Seth, I mean, we've all lived through this, this wave of social media, and um, I think the, the most infamous thing I can point to is, um, you know, when Michael Jackson died, mm -hmm. and you, heard, you saw it once or twice, and you said, oh, come on, that's not real, and then suddenly it was storming everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. So, or did even when Paul Walker died, when Paul Walker from the uh, Fast and Furious movie franchise, he was yeah. in, a, ironically, a car crash. Originally, it was retracted by a lot of news outlets saying that this was just a stunt. And it turns out well, he was actually, he, yeah. he, he, and it was reported first on Twitter, and they all jumped on it. turns out, unfortunately and tragically, he was killed in the car crash. But that same thing happened for him, that, you know, everyone jumped on social media and took it for real, which it turned out to be real, then retracted it because they were like, wait, this is on social media. And they're like, wait, no, it is real. Let's go back on social media. There, there was, um, in the 70s, in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a woman named Faith Popcorn. Faith Popcorn. Um, yeah, I don't know if you remember this whole thing of, like, megatrends, but um, Faith Popcorn had a philosophy, and it had to do with the appearance of things in the newspapers. Okay, so we're going back ancient history to, to newspapers. And um, what she did was she started, you know, you would see a mention of something, and then you'd see more about it, and then you'd see more and more and more. And there was like a, a, a certain threshold where she's, she was able to predict upcoming trends based upon the number of times something was, was relevant in the news. So I think that, wow. you know, it doesn't surprise me with this whole thing with social media. Things are happening faster. We're getting information faster. And, and that's the beauty and benefit of social media. But we also need to be able to interpret it faster as well. So... Um, yeah, there's a lot of fake tweets out there. <laughs> and on that note, these guys are not fake whatsoever. We want to thank our second sponsor, Flywheel. Flywheel is a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for the designers and creative agencies. Flywheel makes it simple to it's simple to build, launch, and manage client sites with an easy-to-use dashboard built from the ground up with modern web designer in mind. With nightly backups, blazing fast load times, WordPress-specific security, and an awesome support team full of WordPress developers, which is very helpful. I can vouch for that. All my client sites are on Flywheel, and they're fantastic. Flywheel can help thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. One of the personal experience, I love that they have a staging site, which is still in beta, but you can actually build, like you move your client site over if it's in WordPress to Flywheel servers, and you can build a site in a staging area and then press one button. One button and it moves it over in like three minutes. Moves the whole site over live. Awesome! It's great. I love it's that. great. I love Flywheel. They're, I mean, they're not exactly the cheapest, but they're well worth the, the thirty dollars a month that you pay for. Sometimes you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for exactly. So de Google debuted a tweet to the search results prioritizing mobile friendly sites, and this was not tomorrow. The article said tomorrow. It was yesterday. Right. But the thing about this is that a lot of people seem to forget that it's, there's now two index, indexes. There's the mm -hmm. regular index on the web, mm -hmm. and there's a mobile index that only affects phones, not even tablets. So when they say, mm -hmm. you know, Google tweaks search results prioritizing mobile-friendly sites, they, what they failed to mention in that headline is that in regular search, eh, everything's fine. But if you want, if you you know, want to come out Seth, on your phone... I, I don't agree with you, Seth, and I think that... Right. Um, yeah, no, and I'll tell you why. Um, I understand what you're saying, and um, it makes sense that your mobile search would be weighed more heavily yeah. for mobile-optimized websites. However, I can't help but feel that there is a spillover into oh, there regular is. search. Yeah. Because if a website is built correctly and it's responsive, then it should be appropriate regardless of the device. Mm. And I think that um, that is a signal to, to search engines that the site has more authority. No, I agree. I agree with you on that. That, that generally when you want to make it, you want to show up mobily, mobily, I'm not sure that's a word, you want to show up <laughs> mobily on mobile website, in, on phones correctly, it's going to help you on the desktop space. But Google has not come out and said that in so many words, not saying that, that it's not happening. But generally, you follow the best practices on the web now, then there's no reason why that you can't benefit in both indexes. So so anyhow, Jody, I know your kids are all grown, so this doesn't really affect you, but 
you know, Instagram will not let you take pictures of, of, of other people breastfeeding or yourself breastfeeding on Instagram. Why? I mean, wait, I don't understand but the why point, you... The point is, I don't understand why you would, but there are people that, I mean, the fact is, this is a whole big hoopla on Facebook, which is now on Instagram, that, God forbid, you, sh- you know, you're sitting there, you take a picture, and, you know, the kid's nursing on you. I don't know why you... I don't know why, why you... I don't... Look, here, here's the thing, and maybe I'm old-fashioned, but to me, um, I nursed three of my kids. I did Did your not kids have, you have any more kids than three? I, no, I nursed all three of them. I only have three children. I nursed all three of there them. Go. Okay, but would I? Why would I post pictures of it? I just, to me, that's inappropriate. I think but, what it is is more like the, the Lichi League, and people are trying to, you know, be all natural and kumbaya, whatever they want to do. The fact is, is that know, before it was like, taken down, look, and now it's not. You still, down. yeah, you still don't have to post that. And look, they're not taking it down, but. There's no accounting for, for uh, yeah. I agree, but I'm not. But I'm a guy. I have no right to say anything about this. Of course, you have a right to say something. I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. I don't see what the big deal of having naked men and women on social media are, as long as it's gated and it comes out. It's full of porn if you go and look for it. But if you don't go and well, look for it, it's not going to come out and hit you in the face, or shouldn't. Okay. All right. So I'm not exactly against. If someone wanted to build a closed group on Facebook that's all porn all the time, they should be able to do that. I mean, Facebook should be not against that. It's a community. But it, well, it should be but if it goes into the public sphere, and that should be regulated. Exactly. Exactly. Agreed. And so my thing is, if someone wants, takes a picture of them breastfeeding, which I don't know why you'd want to, I can't relate. All the more power to you. You can now do it on Facebook. You can, well, I'm not sure if you can do it on Facebook, but you can now do it on Instagram. Go do it. Have fun. Do what you need to do. If that's what you want to do, and you feel like you should be able to do it, and you're going to do it, go do it. You're allowed to now. Well, what's, Seth, what's the reason they decided to allow it? They, because of the firestorm, there's been a major backlash from others who want to have the right to do this. You know, what they, here's what they said. Uh, we, we know that there are times when people might want to share nude images that are artistic, creative in nature. But for a variety of reasons, we don't allow nudity on Instagram. This includes the vi- photos and videos and some digitally created content that shows sex, um, genitals, and close up of full frontal nudity and tussies. I want to say tussies instead of buttocks. I don't know why. Tushes. Tushes. And buttocks. And buttocks is not a bad word. I know. I, just, I don't know why, but I want to say tushes. Um, it also includes right. a few on nipples and yada, yada, yada. But, but essentially, they, you know, they also want to foster a pos- positive, diverse community, remove content that is contains incredible threat and hate speech, yada, yada, yada. They, they were claiming the fact that they, don't want, they want to make sure it's a safe community. I don't see a girl's nipple showing on Facebook, on Instagram. It's going to cause hate speech. Uh, look, I, don't know. I honestly, I think, I think it's like kind of like a non-issue. I think backed into a corner. Um, honestly, I think it's in poor taste, but look, that's just my opinion. For those of you who feel that you need to show your child breastfeeding, good for you. I, I nursed three kids. I didn't feel, I, you know what? I felt it was a private moment with me and my child. I didn't feel like it was something I needed to share with the world, but you know, to wish the right. power to you. All right. Now, now something that is really neat and something com- now for something completely different to quote my <laughs> completely, completely, completely different and super, super cool. cool. Linda. It was bought by LinkedIn or Lin- or. Well, wait. First, you gotta explain what Linda right, first is. First off, everyone knows what LinkedIn is. It is the business social network. Linda is right. a huge training database of videos and courseware, essentially that it's been around since '95. Linda is actually an actual person who developed this whole this whole ecosystem of of training. And if you go to your public library, they can give you access to Linda for free. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, I, I can have access. To- through the Bucks County Library System. I, I, so it's pretty neat. I pay for my Linda. You pay for Linda? I pay for Linda. And it's worth every step. But the thing is, is that LinkedIn bought them because it makes perfect sense to, and they're going to keep them separate. Integrate. But they're going to they're gonna start integrating it. They're going to keep it separate. They always they said we're going to keep it separate. If you mm-hmm. want to do Linda and don't want to do LinkedIn or vice versa or whatever, it's separate. But, we but here's, a, here's, a cool, here's a cool part about it, Seth, and in my opinion. Um, so if you take the classes on Linda, 
right, and you finish a program, I hope that part of what will happen is that you can add that credential to your LinkedIn. You can do it already before that, but... Well, not officially. You could write oh, yeah. it in, but this is something... Like documented that, and certified yeah. and... Well, I don't know about certified because you, you may not know anything, but I think it's like as an employer, if somebody's looking to see if somebody has certain skill sets, it's a, it's a cue. Yeah. It's, it's a way of, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's um, brilliant and I think it's a good move. Exactly. And that's uh, another good move is Zoho Mail. <laughs> so do you want me to do this? this one? Okay. Zoho Mail. Philly Tech Org would love to thank our sponsor, Zoho Mail. Professional email designed for your business with business class features and security, as well as the convenience of the web and mobile. Learn more about Zoho Mail. Sign up for a free, ad-free account for up to 10 users by clicking on our link in the show notes. Yes, and also, you go to the link in the show notes or you go to the sidebar of the website, or if you go to our sponsors page, you go through that, those links, it tells them that, that, you, that you came from us and it makes our, our sponsors happy. So that would be helpful if you so please go to Zoho Mail. Sign up for a free free account. Yes, and before we go forward, before we go forward, uh, uh, with our picks of the week, um, I want to say please go over to Patreon.com/slash/PhillyTechOrg. So Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot org slash PhillyTechOrg, all one word. And if you can donate a dollar an episode, a dollar a month, anything you can help with, help out the network so that we're able to. Grow the network, put new shows on. We had a new show this week called Autism Tech, Unlocking the Science of Autism. That came out on the network finally this week. It, it, it's in a special Yay. feed. We're eventually going to do, to, to, to do Gadget Dogs when she's not traveling. I, I have, in the yeah, I have some. I have some footage and stuff. I just have to sit down and do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll get that on the special feed as well. Yeah. So let's move on to the picks of the week. I have two this week. First off, if you listen to today, I released the, the interview show with um, Luria Pertucci, who is also known as Carrie Lewis. She's not going by Luria. So she um, left Geek Beat and is now doing Geek's Life. It's a new community website and a podcast network. Um, it's, it's at geekslife.com. Check it out. Check out our, my interview I posted today. It's only audio, unfortunately. I would like to see her smiling face in the show, but... It is a great interview. She's been she's been doing video since like the dawn of the internet time where you can really do video online. So it's really it's really neat interview. It's a nice follow up to one that Jody and I did three or four years ago on A2SM. We did one with when she was Callie Lewis, and and, and let me tell you, I, I just want to put in a, a word because she knows her stuff. And um, Seth is a great interviewer, and I think it would really be a good interview to go and, and listen yeah, to. Yeah, and check out Geek's Life, and it's well, it's an interesting model. They 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 were doing Patreon for the longest time, and they when they moved over to Geek's Life, this, they decided that the Patreon wasn't keeping stuff that for patrons private, like anyone could see the stuff. So they made their own Patreon system on their own website. It's all in WordPress. Very handy. Very neat how they set it up. Um, but you know, it's pay what you can to get advanced membership. You pay three dollars up to two thousand dollars a month, depending on you know how much you can afford and how much you want to give to the community. But it's investing in the community, just like Patreon does. But they have a little bit more control over what people can see. So it's nice, and they have a forum on there, and it's a really great community. And I'm actually going to start writing for them weekly. So. Be sure to check that out. I will cross post it over at Fully Tech as well. So, and my actual pick of the week is a app that on iPhone and Android, of course, and PC and Mac called Close C L O Z E. It's a social CRM. It's meant to help people stay in touch with their business contacts. It reminds you when they email somebody. Like, it knows like it goes off your Facebook, your Twitter, and your LinkedIn, and says, "Hey, last time we talked to Jody was." Three months ago, God forbid. And but you, you normally talk, and it says you normally chat every twenty days or something like that. You should probably check in with her. And then so, <laughs> no, but it's great because it made me realize that hey, I'm not following up with the people that I should follow up with. Just drop them out and say hi. You know, how's it going? How are things? You know, and I, I'm, the biggest thing, best way to make get business 
is not sell yourself, not to sell your wares. It's just to check in and say, hey, how's life? And then put yourself in front of them. But don't do it too much or don't do it too little. So that's close at cloze.com. Um, there's a, it's a freemium account, so for more features, you pay, I think, $19 a month. It's a little pricey, but I, I decided to do it monthly and see what I like it or like about it. And then you can get 33% off if you pay for the year up front. So check them out. And Jody, what do you have for us? Okay, so um, you're familiar with JibJab. Yes. Um, they have an app called JibJab Messages. It integrates with Facebook. Of course, it um, doesn't. Yeah, but um, it also integrates with your pictures that are on your that phone. That can be dangerous. Um, yeah, it's very dangerous. But the, I mean, it's cute. It's fast. It's easy to use. Very simple. Um, the graphics are smaller, obviously, because they're sent as a, a message. You can um, download it to your phone and then save it through your regular messaging program, or you can send it through Facebook Messenger. Um, and you can create little animated things with people's faces. No, it's always dangerous. Um, <laughs> Yes, it's very dangerous. Um, it's cute. My my gripe is that um, they, I guess, with the, the new update to the operating system on the iPhone, it seems to oh. crash several times before you can finally get it to stay open. When you get it to stay open, it's a really cute program. They just added um, audio files right. to it. So, yeah, if you want to send somebody like a belching noise or a farting noise, oh, you can do Jody. that. Yeah, well, we jumped the shark already. So, sure. but anyway, <laughs> check out Jib Jab messages and um, and have That's fun. Fine. And so, here's a question for you. I'm writing myself a note to post this on Thursday. I'm writing myself a note as we talk. Um, <laughs> so, like, have you used it for a lot of people, or do you generally just post things on Facebook? I've seen some things on Facebook from you. What do you, what do you mean? Are you are you using this app a lot, or is it just a fun little time waster? Both. <laughs> I waste a lot of time using it. Oh, don't tell the state of New Jersey about that. <laughs> oh please, but no. I here's the thing. I um, you know, I mean, if if uh, you know, one of my friends is down, you know, and she was telling me um, she's upset because she was fostering a couple of puppies, and then you know they they got placed and so she had to take them and she was in love with them and you know I mean it's a good thing that she did but she felt sad so I made her a little one and a little jib jab and sent it to her you know that is kind it of only thing. for is it only for iPhone I'm looking that up right now or is it is it jib jab message for Android it's on Android as well yeah see I think the Android one probably would work better I don't know why the the um, it was very reliable for a while and um, recently, it seems like it, it's not reliable. Then it was reliable again, and, and now it seems like it's not reliable. It's it like I can open it. So yeah. you can pay for stuff as well? Um, I haven't seen anything yet that I had to pay oh, for. Oh, I wonder, I wonder what their whole thing is. Monetization. I mean, other than branding, you know. Well, I think they have um, other apps that you can pay uh, for. That's true, yeah. And, and then you've got um, the jib jab, you know. I have the um, what you call it, the account where it you can send out jib jabs to. Do you to pay people. for jib jab? I do. Jody, it's, it's cheap. It's like twenty seven dollars a year, and it and it gives me so much joy. As long as, as, long as you're happy <laughs> and. It, yes, it it makes me happy. Well, that's all that matters, Joe. But this has been great. You know, we're you know, thank you for being back in the. Back in Jersey for a little while, not galvanizing around with your doggies, but you know, we're glad to have you back, and hopefully we'll get the, the trifecta back online next week. So, okie doke, and we will see everybody next week. Take care, guys. Say bye, Jody. Bye, Jody. Oh.